My name is Nadia Belbisi. I work with NBC Television as a Chief U.S. Correspondent based in Washington, D.C. I grew up in Gaza mainly. Most of my formative years were in Gaza till I was 18 years old. And then I wanted to study medicine. That was my first passion and I couldn't for all kinds of political reasons um, being a Palestinian. And uh, I ended up being a rebel for a year, refusing to study anything. And finally, I came across somebody who told me, persuaded me to go to Birzeit University. I was really interested in that. Uh, it was a, a great experience for me. I was on the student council. I was an activist in student life. Uh, but then uh, it was at the time when the Israeli uh, military uh, authority was taking actions every th few months to close down the university. So I ended up going to England, I did my BA there, and I went back as a young student to Gaza. And the first Intifada started in 87. I worked briefly with the International Committee for the Red Cross with political prisoners. Um, and then when the Intifada started, all of a sudden Gaza became an attraction to foreign reporters who had never been there because they always took the Israeli point of view. And I was lucky enough to uh, strain for AFP, Agence France Press. I worked for them for a year in Gaza. Um, and uh, it was a very exciting time. Maybe I was young and foolish and needed the job, so <laughs> I was willing to take too many risks at the time. And then I moved to Jerusalem office for a year, and then I was start looking for adventure. So I went back to England, I did my master's, and I ended up in Sri Lanka. So I spent there four years covering the civil war between the Tamil Tigers and the, the government forces. important for me as a journalist before I am a Palestinian is the integrity of the of the profession and I always say to young people the most important thing is your objectivity that you double check the sources that you're good as your last story regardless of how if you're a veteran or a new reporter we still miles away from being perfect and uh, you know journalism does not exist in isolation with everything else that political happening in one country Normally, it's, it's, a, it's a fourth uh, authority, it's a pillar of, uh, of uh, democracy. And um, until now, I think we have few independent uh, publications in Palestine, but by large, I still believe that most of them still uh, follow um, the government line. And I think it's very, very important for us. And it's easy for me to say that because I live in Washington. Sometimes people have to uh, sacrifice their lives being in a, a place where they report or they uncover a situation that's very uncomfortable for the authority and they pay the ultimate price of basically going to jail or even losing their life as a result. Women in general are uh, half of the society and actually I believe not just that men and women are equal, I believe that we are superior because we have uh, multitask, they can do so many things. As a, as a, as a woman, as a mother, um, it's very important to give that perspective into your reporting. So it's not just that you are part of an integral part of a society, that any advancement cannot happen without the participation of women. Uh, but particularly because you have this inside situations, I believe that I cover it in a different way than my male colleagues would. Palestinian women have been pioneers in comparison to many other Arab women in terms of being in the forefront of leading because of the situation that we have to struggle under occupation. So they've always been part of everything that's happening there, but nowadays we have seen probably a, a sit-back. And at my time, I'm talking about almost 20 or 25 years ago, you know, women were part of everything, the trade unionists, the feminist movement, the political leaders, um, the idea of enlightenment and, and, uh, and giving a, a, a perspective from a tolerant point of view that we don't see now. I think maybe the rise of extremism and maybe political Islam has changed the landscape uh, in the Arab world and also in Palestine. So women has to be uh, in the front and I believe that we are qualified to lead. It's not just the fact that you have a quota that women has to be there because we are women. I honestly believe that women offer uh, a better world. A women leader on the top um, can change things always to the better of everybody because also they lead a family. It's not just, it's a household. 
So the embitterment of, of life of women will result in a, a better society for all. As I, as I mentioned before, I think, um, uh, first of all, I hope that the Palestinian society will always um, move forward in the direction of uh, democracy. Because ultimately, democracy is a better guard for everything. It's less war, it's less conflict, it is an expression of uh, individual rights, of women's rights, of human rights, and journalism, by extension, is part and parcel of this package. So. I hope that in the near future that we will see a completely independent journalism in Palestine that stays away from the influence of anybody, whether it's a government or an authority or a business community or whatever, that when we report things, we report it because we believe in it, that it is serving the individual, the listeners or the viewer, and it's not really a part of uh, or under the dominance of any party. Uh, whether it's a uh, government or or, uh, or business, so um, I see actually good signs in terms of development of journalism. Now the broadcast journalism has taken over the print media, and I still loyal to, to the old-fashioned way of of reporting, which is really print. Television makes you an instant star, and unfortunately, I think 70% of people in the Arab world they they, they rely on uh, broadcast media, television in particular, as a main source of information. And I think we need, education is vital, and media can play an important role in that. And the future of journalism, the more, the better quality of journalists that we have now, the better the society will be ultimately. You know, I take inspiration from, in, from ordinary people. I've been in situations where I don't have to give you a name of a role model, but actually sometimes I see the, the hardship uh, of people living in a hut in southern Sudan or people struggling just to make a living uh, in, in Nigeria or in Kenya or in South Africa or in a refugee camp in Lebanon. Uh, and I, 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 I take strength and I look at the people's lives and I, uh, I compare it to mine. And despite all the, the individual hardship that or the tragedies that we might face in our own lives, it, 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 uh, it uh, pales in comparison to what these people have to go through. And sometimes our job is very hard. I mean, it's glamorous most of the time, but it's very tough uh, uh, in, in retrospect, looking back at the wars that I have covered. And sometimes I look at these people and I think they are my role model because they have this perseverance inside them, this uh, willingness uh, to change things, but also to survive more than anything else against all um, you know, aspects of, of harsh reality, I think they're the people who inspire me the most.